little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am delighted to show you a new piece that I came up with called the Corded Shells Shawl. Yes. Now, very recently I did a tutorial on the Corded Shells Stitch and I was inspired by you guys because you said, hey, can this be made into a shawl? Well, after much fiddling and finagling, yes, I figured it out. Um, it was, woo, it was a little hairy at the beginning, but I did figure it out. It is, if I'm not mistaken, it is just a six row repeat. Very, very simple. And I love it. Got a really neat texture to it. It is one sided. The back side is nice and flat, whereas the front side, the facing side, the right side has a really nice sort of corded texture to it. And that's done using front post double crochets. The rest of it is very, very simple with these little cluster shells going on here. And absolutely had a blast making this. Now this particular example, I used two skeins of Lion Brands Mandala. This video is not sponsored, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I use if you want to duplicate the results. And as far as the, the specs, the details, the colorway, which I thought this is the perfect colorway for the winter season, it's called Spirit. And like I said, I did use two of these. It is a weight of three and it is about 590 yards. Now I didn't use the entire skein only because um, I wanted the colors to line up nicely. And in doing so, I ended up scrapping some of the yarn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and uh, for this piece, by the way, I used there it is. <laughs> I used a size H five millimeter hook. Now for today's example, for you know, swatch purposes, uh, I'm going to be using some Pound of Love and a size I 5.5 millimeter hook. It really is quite simple once you get the hang of the pattern. And it is one of those great sort of, you know, mindless stitches that you can get totally lost in. Um, and when I said it's a six row repeat, the center the center spine, it's a three row repeat and the edges are a two row repeat. So that if I'm not mistaken, it does basically equate to a six row repeat because you do have a front side and a back side. At any rate, without further ado, yes, let's get started. Okie dokie, row one. Going to start with our slip knot and chaining one, two, three, four, and five in total. And we're going to be working into that first chain that we did. And the remaining four chains is going to act as a double crochet and a chain one space. And so then working into that first chain, going to do two doubles chain one two doubles chain one two doubles chain one two doubles, chain one, and one double. And then of course you can pull your tail, cinch it up nice and tightly. So to recap, we have basically a double crochet with a chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and a double. So we've got essentially two clusters and then two little guys at the end. Alrighty, let's continue on to row two. 
Okay, row two. Going to start right in by chaining up three. And that is going to count as our first double. And we're going to go immediately into this space, this chain one space, for the continuation of our first cluster. So that double counts as the first and then into this space, double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets into this space. So we have our first cluster. And after what we're doing here, we're not going to be doing a double crochet in a chain one space. This is really just to get us started. Okay, so now from here, without doing any chaining, into this chain one space, just do one double crochet. And then again, without doing any chains, we're going to go into this center chain one space with a fresh grouping of two clusters. So that is two doubles. chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. There we go then into this next chain one space double crochet just one and then into the chain one space at the end two doubles chain one two doubles And there you are. And you know what? I'm going to, <laughs> for, the, for the sake of ease, I'm going to sew in this tail so that it's not quite so much in my way. But that is the end of row two. Okay, row three. Okay, now, before we go any further, what I was saying about how the ends are a two row repeat, well, we haven't gotten up to the three row repeat yet as far as the center spine, but the two row repeat on the ends here and here, actually it's where we're gonna start right now because this right here was an increase where we went into that space. Well, right now we're not going to go into a space because we don't have a space. So we're going to create a space. And of course, you know I'm going to do several repeats, so not to worry. All right, so for row three, I'm going to start by chaining up three. Turn the work. And we're going to go into this chain one space here with a cluster. So that is, of course, two doubles. chain one and two doubles, okay, pull out a little bit more yarn, there we go, and then we have our solitary double crochet right here. Now, when doing the front post and later on the back post double crochets around these, you want to do it a little bit loosely. Otherwise, the edge here, it will curl. So you wanna be careful about that. I can't stress that enough. So I'm going to go in to do a front post double crochet. And if you just sort of pull up a little bit of yarn so that you have a nice loose front post double crochet stitch. I'm gonna do that again for you. 
Yes, you want to be a little bit loose. Give it some slack, some breathing room. Otherwise, your whole piece will curl and buckle. And of course, you don't want that. So after doing your front post, then into this next chain two space, do another cluster. So that's two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Into the next chain one space, another cluster. Two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Into the next chain one space, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Okay, then we've reached our solitary double crochet. So again, front post, double crochet loosely. And then at the end here, going to do into this chain space, another cluster. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And last but not least, do a double crochet into the top of this first double crochet. Now, the reason why is because when we started, we did a chaining up of three and then a cluster into that chain one space because we need this extra space at either end. So that being said, I'm just gonna go into the top of this first Double crochet that we did from the last row. There we go. Be sure to get underneath both loops of the V. And there you go. Now, right now, these front posts, they are subtle, but we will have many more of them as we keep going, not to worry about that. So let's continue on to row four. Okay, row four. As always, going to start by chaining up three and turning the work. And as you can see, we have our space here. Now, there isn't a chain one space, but there is a gap in between our double crochet and our cluster. So we're going to work into this gap right here. So into the gap, do a double crochet chain one and two double crochets. Like so. Then into, again, uh, we're not doing any sort of chaining in between here. Um, into this next chain one space, we're just gonna be doing a cluster in the cluster. So that's two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Okay, and now we have our double crochet, and this is going to be a back post double crochet because right now this is the, the quote unquote wrong side or the back side of the piece that we're working. So to do a back post double crochet, instead of going around the front, we're going to go around the back. Like so. And again, go loose. Give slack. There you go. Okay, so from here into the next cluster, that chain one space, do another cluster. Two doubles.
chain one, two doubles. Okay, and we are almost at the center spine. Now we have a fresh empty space right here. So into this space, going to do a double crochet. And then into the, the center spine, do a fresh cluster, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Okay, into this next space. I mean, it's not a chain one space, but it, it counts for all intents and purposes. Into this space right here, in between the clusters, do a double crochet. Into the next cluster, chain one space, do a cluster, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. And around this double crochet, do a back post, double crochet. Give yourself some slack. Into the next cluster, that chain one space, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. And last but not least, into this sort of gap at the end, do another cluster of two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And that is the end of row four. Now, like I said, this is the back. If you look at the front, you can see that our front post double crochets, they are doing their thing. And up here, right here and here, we're gonna have two new ones sprouting out. And pretty soon we're gonna be having two, one right here and one right here about to start. So they are going to be burgeoning and blossoming forth, not to worry. All right, let's keep going to row five. Okay, row five. So we're going to start off by chaining up three. One, two, three. Turn the work. And again, see down here, what we did was this was our chaining up of three um, and a cluster inside of here. Well, going to do again, we have our chaining up of three and we're going to do our first cluster into here. So it's sort of an alternate thing because here we had an increase right here, no increase, if that makes sense. So going into that first chain space with our cluster. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And before we go into this cluster, well, right here we need to have a double crochet in between our clusters. Then cluster into the chain one space, two doubles. Chain one, two doubles. Okay, and we've reached our front post. So front post around the front post, loosely. Cluster into the chain one space of the next cluster. Two doubles. Chain one two doubles. And since we're on the front side around this double crochet front post, 
loosely. And okay, now when I was saying before about how this is a three row repeat with the center spine, if you look closely down here, we have our one, two, three, four groupings of two, or our two clusters. Then we have two rows. Well, we need another uh, heavy duty grouping of the two clusters into this top spine chain one space. So going right in, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. So that is, in essence, eight double crochets separated by chain one spaces. Okay, because we got one, two, three, and four groupings of two. Okie dokie. Then scooting right along, front post around to this double crochet. Do another cluster into this chain one space. Two doubles. Chain one. Two doubles. Front post around to the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles, do a double crochet into the space in between the clusters, and then again into this chain one space, do a cluster, but then we need the chain three, sorry, the double crochet at the end at the top of that chain three, excuse me. So cluster into this chain one space, that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, and then double crochet into the last double crochet. So that again, see we have our double crochet and then our cluster in the cluster. Well, we've got the cluster in the cluster and a double crochet. So it all works out symmetrically. That's very important. Okay. So yes, we have these coming along right here, these front posts. We've got this one coming along nicely, and pretty soon we're going to have this one as well starting in. All right, let's keep going. Okay, row six. How about let's say this is where the, the repeat is going to start. I mean, technically speaking, you could end on any row and still end up with a really nice edge to it. But let's say that this is going to be the start of the actual repeat, just for argument's sake. So I'm going to chain up three, turn the work, and then in theory, we will be going up to row 11 for the completeness of things. So after chaining up three into this gap here, do a double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets. Okay, into the chain one space, do a cluster two doubles, chain one and two doubles, okay, and we've reached our solitary double, so because this is the wrong side, needs to be a back post, 
double crochet. There we go. Cluster into the chain one space. And every time I say cluster in the chain one space, it's just two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay. And we reached the back post. So back post around that stitch loosely. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around the next back post. Okay, and my yarn is getting tangled. There we go. Okay, so now we have here one, two, three chain spaces. Well, in each chain space, do a cluster. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, into the next chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, and into the last, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, there we are, back post around to the next, back post double crochet, cluster into the next chain one space, Okay, back post around to the next back post, cluster into the next chain one space, back post around this solitary double. to the next chain one space, do a cluster. There we go. And then into this remaining space at the end, another cluster. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay, and that is the end of row six. It's coming along, loving it. Row seven. Okay, chain up three, turn the work, and we're gonna scoot right into that first chain one space with a cluster, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, double crochet in between the clusters, cluster into the next chain one space, with two doubles, chain one, two doubles, Okay, front post, around the front post. Cluster into the next chain one space.
front post around the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. Okay, into the next cluster. Well, next chain one space, do a cluster, excuse me. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles. In between the clusters, do a double crochet. Into the next chain one space, do another cluster. into the space in between the clusters, do a double crochet. Into the next chain one space, do another cluster. Front post around the front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Double crochet in between the clusters and into the next chain one space, cluster with a double crochet at the end. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, and double crochet into the top of that first slash last double crochet from the previous row. There you go. And that is the end of row seven. All right, row eight, start by chaining up three, turn the work into this space right here. Work a double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets into that space. Into the chain one space of that first cluster, work a cluster. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay, again, we are on the back side, so we've got back posts. So around this double crochet, back post. Again, I remind you, be loose. Okay, into the chain one space, cluster. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles, like a little song. Back post around the next back post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around the back post. And of course, all of these rows will be time stamped in the description box down below, of course. Cluster into the next chain one space. 
I always like to give you guys reference points where I think that they would be helpful. Always. Okay, back post around the next back post. Cluster into the next chain one space. And here we have our little double crochet just hanging out. Well, I'm going to back post him. There we go. And then right in here, into the top here, we need to increase that once again with the two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. So two doubles. Chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. I think I got that. So two doubles, chain one, two doubles chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Yeah, so I've got my four groups of two. Okay, continuing right along, going to back post the next double. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around the next back post. Cluster into the next chain one space. There we go. Back post around the next back post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around the next back post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around this solitary double. Cluster into the next chain one space. And cluster at the very end in this space here. And there you go. So we turn it over and it's looking nice. Looking very, very, very pretty. Yes, indeed. Okay, let's keep going. Row nine. Okay, so chain up three, turn the work, and we're gonna go directly into this first cluster with a cluster, because you can, as you can see, like we have our chain three, and then down here we have our chain three, and down here we have our chain three. So that's the two row repeat aspect here. Now to recap, see we just did 
our big sort of grouping up here. And the last time we did it was down here. So it's one, two, three, one, or further down here. Again, another big, big cluster right here. So that's one, two, three, big cluster. So that's one, two, three, big cluster. And so that's, that's sort of my explanation as to how the center spine is a three row repeat. The side, you know, these sides here, it's a two row repeat. And so we've got three more rows to go, nine, 10, and 11 for the full repeat because this is a two-sided piece. If it was a one-sided piece, that might be a little bit different. But at any rate, back to what I was saying. <laughs> I chained up three, turned the work. I'm just trying to be explanatory and thorough, not redundant. Trust me. All right, so into this chain one space, let's do a cluster. See, it's my thing where I want to not just tell you what to do, but why you're doing it so that it makes more sense. Okay, so chain up three, got my first cluster in there, into this sort of gap in between, do a double in between the clusters, and then into the chain one space of this cluster, do another cluster. of the two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay, front post, around the front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post and cluster into the next chain one space. Now, as far as what yarn to use for this particular project, I would say really anything goes. Um, I think that an ombre would be gorgeous. Um, a, a cake yarn like the mandala would be awesome. I, the only thing I think I would not really suggest would be a quick change variegated where every couple of inches it is another color because I think it would be a little too busy. That's all. So right now I'm just doing my clusters and clusters and front posts around the front posts. See, I'm already at that point in the pattern where I'm already on auto, autopilot, essentially. Um, it's just the, the sides and the center spine that you really have to focus on when you are at about this point. So I'm just doing my clusters in the clusters and my front posts around the front posts. Okay, so now we've reached the center spine. So into this space, this space, and this space, going to be doing clusters. So into the first chain one space, do a cluster. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Next chain one space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And third space, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay, front post around the front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. 
cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post around the next front post. Cluster into the next chain one. Front post around the next front post. Oop, sorry. Cluster into the next chain one space. Front post, no, sorry, there is no front post. It's just a double crochet in between the clusters in this space right here. Double crochet. And then cluster into the chain one space. and double crochet into the top of the first double crochet. There you go. Okay. Because again, we need to create that space and we have that double there. We have our double here and we have a space at the end. So it's all symmetrical, that's very important. And let's continue on. Okay, row 10. Let me just adjust my camera. There we go. All right, so chain up three. Turn the work. And into this space right here. Double crochet, chain one and two double crochets. Okay, cluster into the next chain one space. Okay, back post around, because we're on the back side right now, so back post around that first solitary double crochet and then cluster into the next chain one space back post around the next back post cluster into the chain one space Back post around the next back post. Sorry. There we go. Cluster into the next chain one space. Back post around the next back post, and so on and so forth, really for the rest of this row until we reach the spine. It's really only, like I said, at the beginning and end and middle, but when you're working along the sides, really nothing changes. The only difference between being whether it's a front post or a back post, and that's just determined by what side you're on. So that's pretty straightforward now. Okay, back post. And cluster. And 
and back post. And cluster. Okay, now I've reached the top, so in between the clusters here, I need a double crochet, and then into the top cluster, just do another cluster. And then a double crochet in between the clusters and then another cluster. Okay, and now we're working our way along down the other side. So, back post, the back post, Cluster into the chain one space. Back post. Cluster in the chain one. back post, cluster, back post, and cluster. And we're almost done with the row. Getting there. Back post. If I don't get myself tangled on myself here. There we go. And cluster. and around the solitary double crochet, back post. Okay, cluster into the chain one. And then cluster into this last space at the end. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles, as if we didn't know what that was all about, right? <laughs> Okie dokie. And that is the end of row 10. We've come a long way in a short amount of time, don't you think? I love it. Absolutely, positively. Gorgeousness. Okay, let's keep going. All right, row 11, last row of our repeat. Going to start by chaining up three. And into the first chain one space, cluster. Two doubles, chain one, two doubles. There we are double crochet into the space in between the clusters, cluster into the next chain one space, there we are, front post around 
the front post, cluster into the chain one space, and do this all the way until you reach the center spine. Just cluster in the chain one spaces, front post around the front posts. I don't know about you, but I am partial to front posts over back posts. You know, it's just me and my sort of idiosyncrasies. I think it's because you can see them easier, but I'm just partial like that. So just keep on doing your clusters in the clusters and your front posts around the front posts. really that easy. There we go. Another front post. And I know I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, because I feel that repetition has a tendency to stick. Uh, <laughs> um, make sure that when you're doing your front and your back post double crochets, that you do give it a little bit of slack, perhaps more than you normally would, um, because it really, really does make a difference as to whether or not your project will have a curling tendency, very much like Tunisian crochet, where it's like, yep, hi, I'm going to curl. How are you? <laughs> It's all about the tension of what you're doing. Now, what you could conceivably do is instead of doing um, front and back post double crochets, if you are a diehard tight stitcher, as I tend to be, you might want to be even inclined to try perhaps doing front and back post treble crochets if your tension is that much of an issue. Or, you know, you could try to sort of you know, restrain yourself and do doubles, but that, that is an option. All right, so around this solitary double, do a front post. I'm just sort of putting it out there as a possibility. All right, then, again, as you remember, we have our, our large grouping. So that's one, two, three. Well, we need another large grouping right here. So that's going to be eight doubles separated by the uh, chain one spaces, four groups of two. So that's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, hello, there we go, and two doubles. You know, it's essentially two clusters separated by a chain one space in a chain one space, and it works. Yes, it does. Okay. All right, so going back down the other side. Front post around this little double crochet here. Cluster in the chain one space. Front post around the front post. Cluster in the chain one space. Front post around the front post. Cluster in the chain one space. Front post. And cluster. Yeah, actually, the finished shawl that I did, I finished that, you know, in, I want to say, about two maybe three days. Um, it does work up 
very, very, very quickly. Granted, you know, I don't have a heck of a lot <laughs> of other things in my life. So I was able to devote a lot of time to it. But yeah, a, a couple days, I would say, um, perhaps more than a, a weekend project, but definitely doable. It does work up nice and quickly. And as far as the age old question of how much yardage, it really depends on, you know, the, the weight of your yarn, the gauge of your stitch. Cause I get that question all the time. How much yarn do I need? Um, and it's a fair question, but it's also fair for me to say, well, it really depends on, you know, the, uh, the gauge as far as your tension, because if you're using a really small hook, and really thin yarn, well, you're probably going to need more um, or less if you're very, a very loose stitcher. By the way, I've reached the end here, so I need a double crochet in between my clusters. Um, so it really does vary. And then into this chain one space, another cluster, and then a double crochet at the very end. to that last double crochet, do a double crochet. So as, yeah, as far as how much yarn you're going to need, I would say, I mean, my, my general basis is buy more than you think you're going to need, use what you actually need, and return what you don't, or keep it in your stash, which is invariably what I end up doing. Um, so that is the end of row 11. Full repeat. There you go. Okay. All right, my dears. So that concludes this tutorial for the corded shells shawl. Say that five times fast. I absolutely love how this looks and in such a short amount of time, really. It's gorgeous. Love it. And I hope that my explanation of everything was sufficient. Basically, just keep following rows six through 11. And, you know, if you, if you need to, just follow the little timestamps down below. And, you know, just keep in mind that the, the edges, it is back and forth, back and forth between needing to do an increase or just a chain up three and then going into the following one. And then in the center spine, it is a three row repeat because, for instance, again, we have the large grouping, so that's one, two, three. Another large grouping, so that's one, two, three. Another large grouping. So that's a really easy way, regardless of what side you're on, whether it's the front side or the back side, if you just keep that in mind with the center spine being a repeat of three rows and the sides being a repeat of two rows. That really helped me when I was doing this piece. And then as far as whether it's a front post or a back post, just follow suit with, uh, you know, the previous example rows that you had been doing. Okay. So that being said, really hoped you liked this tutorial. Uh, if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. I appreciate your appreciation. Mm-hmm. Also, please hit subscribe because I do try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations, or of course, do visit my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Would love to see you there. And also, check out my Etsy store. Um, I do have some patterns up for sale. Um, I haven't put up anything new in a while, but I do hope to get some more items up there relatively soon. Also, of course, my Teespring store for Fiber Spider merchandise. Check that out. All right. So listen, everybody, thank you again so much for watching. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe.
Take care of yourselves and each other. I love you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.